moment, Amen. this church day. Amen. I'm Facebooking Sher, and she's talking to me right now, and she's ready. We can call her in a few minutes. She has a prophecy. Pastor Ken and all of you, and she also has a special word for each and every one of you today. There's one for each. Yeah. So, so we'll give you the word, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, before before we do that, I, I was praying and I just I, I asked the Lord, what what could I share that would encourage you and build you up in your faith? Yeah. And I, if you let me, I just just for maybe um, say 10, 10 or twelve minutes, I'll uh, share some some things with you. Do you like my pulpit? It's okay, yeah. That's good. I love it. So, um, so I want to share with you some things that I think that are really exciting uh, around the way that we believe, but the way that we speak. Okay. So, in the Bible, in, in Genesis chapter one and verse three. God said with his mouth, he said, let there be light. Boom. And something happened. There was, the Bible said there was nothing and there was void, which means zero, zilch. There was nothing. So God made something out of nothing by what he said. Okay. Now, um, I've, I've written this message has some notes in it and it's got some fun facts Pastor Ken, I researched the scientists from NASA, and they have calculated Back to the space. Back to exactly the space. in space. See exactly space. <laughs> See the Lord prepared her. Exactly. Thirteen point seven billion years ago, they've been able to calculate the edge of the universe and replay it back through mathematics in time. So thirteen point seven billion years ago, something happened. We know. That was Genesis 1-3. Let there be light. Okay, here's another fun fact. The scientists, and this is the men and women who send people into space. They've got to get the calculations correct. They've calculated the edge of the universe. So the earth is, is in here, and way out here is the edge. The edge of the whole universe. Do you know the edge of the universe continues to travel and expand today it's expanding so who knows what speed that edge is traveling at a hundred miles an hour a thousand miles an hour who, who wants to have a guess what speed the speed of light it's the speed of light wow. that means when god said let there be light 13.7 billion years ago that statement still works today. Okay. It's still working today. So let's let's think about now Moses and Moses' journey in the Bible. And and God took him to a place, and the, the Hebrews they're traveling through the wilderness, and they were hungry, but God and thirsty, and God did miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. They were hungry and they wanted meat. And God sent quails from heaven, quails, and they catch the quails and they could eat, eat quail. They were thirsty in the desert. There was no water and he made water. Every morning they'd wake up and there's food on the ground called manna to eat for 40 years every day. Miracles. Well, as they kept moving, they, they came to a place, and I'll tell you that it was in the... Desert of Zin, Z-I-N, and there was no water. Now before, when, when there was no water, Moses had a stick. And, and God said, hit the rock. So he hit the rock and water gushed out. So, so everyone could drink, the animals could drink, and everyone's thirsty and they're saved. And that's, isn't God good? Well, a long time later, the same situation happened again. And this time, God said to Moses, I want you to speak to the rock. Don't use the stick. Yes. Speak to the rock. And Moses hit the rock twice. Bang, bang. And 
water came out. But God said, God said, Moses, I'm very angry. I'm disappointed that you didn't speak to the rock. Why, why do we think God was trying to take Moses on a journey to stop using the stick and put the stick down and start to use his mouth? Because God wanted Moses to be like him. God wanted to be Moses to be just like him. Yeah? Now because of that, in my notes you'll read in the Bible, God was so loving, he let Moses look at the top of the mountain to see with his eyes the promised land. But because he hit the rock, he said, you can't go into the promised land. So Moses saw the future, but he couldn't go there. Right? So this is a big, a big concept for us to understand. What we say is so important. Amen. So let's understand what G Jesus says uh, about, about speaking. He says, it's not what you do or what you eat or what you touch that makes you unclean. It's what you say. Oh, okay. oh, wow. So maybe we need to think about what we say. The Apostle James, in the book of James, he says, Our tongue is such a small thing, but it can sell, set hell on fire because if we say the wrong thing. And the word says that life, life or death is in our tongue. So what we say is really important. So I started with, let there be life. And then we understand the story of Moses and Moses' journey of not use the, the stick or the staff, but begin to use his mouth. I mean, who knows if Moses spoke to the rock and the water came out because he spoke, who knows what could have happened? Moses would have gone in and lived in the promised land. Okay. So um, let me let me get some other scriptures here because I, I I want us to think about. There's a scripture that says, out of the overflow of our heart, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So that means what we're saying is a reflection of what's happening in our soul. Amen. If we're unhappy, we will say unhappy things. If we're sad, we're going to say sad things. If we're bitter, we're going to say sharp. Things. But if we're loving people and we love the Lord and we want to build them up, sometimes inside we feel crushed. But on we say, no, Lord, I love you and all is well in my soul. And then we speak life. We speak creation. We speak liberty and freedom. We speak Healing! Yeah. Yeah. Miracles! Yeah. And this is how blind people can see. We say, see in Jesus' name. Yeah. Walk in Jesus' name. Yeah. Dead person, get up yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sickness, get up in yeah. Jesus' name. I love you in Jesus' name. Yeah. I tell you a joke and... <laughs> oh, in Jesus' name. Joy in Jesus' Amen. name. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? So I'll finish, I'll finish with these thoughts. Um, in uh, Colossians 4, verse 6, this is Apostle Paul writing uh, to the, uh, the church. He said, let your conversation be full of grace. Grace. Listen, seasoned with salt. Seasoned with salt. So that you may know how to answer everyone. So, so in my notes, here I have, I'll, I'll zoom in close to the camera. You can see, here's your words 
with, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little salt shaker. That's the end of the notes. See? So you put salt on your words. Yeah? Salt. Salt. Yeah? To remind us. To season. Now, I'll just finish with this thought. So I have all the notes, and Pastor Ken, if you want the notes, like it's got some uh, interesting things. You can give it to your friends. You can email it and share. So salt the Romans in when Jesus in Jesus' time salt was very rare and salt was as expensive as gold and salt was used as money by the soldiers and the Roman soldiers in Jesus' day they were paid their salary in salt it was so valuable and salt is a preservative. So we ask the Holy Spirit to salt our heart. Amen. Amen. To preserve us. Amen. To make us savory and delicious. Amen. So that what we say is gracious and Amen. sweet and full of hope. Amen. And it's full of fun. And it's full of excitement. Amen. And it's full of creation. And it's full of miracles. Amen. Yeah? Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you like that? Yeah. Yeah.